So if you can imagine the scene, uh, it's in the book of Exodus. The people of Israel have just escaped Egypt and they have begun their long tra trek to uh, Mount Horeb, uh, where uh, they, are, they were told, or Moses was told by God to gather the people after they had been released from slavery. And on Horeb, there is this great theophany. There's this great, uh, it's just, it's thunder and lightning and, and fire. And, and Moses is to go up on the mountain. And when Moses goes up on the mountain, he encounters God. And God establishes his covenant with, um, uh, with Moses and with the people. Uh, and he he enshrines that covenant. He um, he marks that covenant with the giving of a law. Uh, in the ancient world, the giving of a law was uh, was a, a big deal. It was a mark of civilization. It was a it was a sign that you knew right from wrong. Um, uh, it, it was uh, it was it was a mark of having a good life. Um, in giving a law to uh, the people of Israel. Um, Israel could feel that God was guiding them in everything that, that they would be doing. Um, and that law is still with us today. Um, and uh, many Christians wonder to themselves, why is it when I read the first five books of the Bible and I read the various laws, that there are laws that we seem to keep as Christians, right? We, you know, the laws of the Ten Commandments. Uh, and various moral laws, and why are there laws that we don't keep? So, for example, um, the kosher laws, um, you know, not eating pig's meat or shellfish or anything like that. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's a good question, and uh, uh, when we try to understand God's law as it was handed on to God's people, Israel, it helps us to uh, better appreciate not just the entire biblical story, but uh, the story, in particular, the story of Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus at different junctures is going to um, is going to either comment on that law, or to fulfill that law, or to de deepen our understanding of that law. We had a reading this last Sunday when we um, saw Jesus cleanse a leper, and we might ask ourselves, why is it a big deal that he's a leper? And we might see that the man was suffering. But the more we have a better understanding of the law uh, of Moses, the law that was operative uh, for uh, Jesus's people and the law still operative for the Jewish people today, the better we can understand the dynamics of that story. The leper is somebody who's an outcast of society. He is ritually impure. He's not allowed to come before uh, God in the altar in the temple. Um, he is meant to stay away from all other people because he could give his uncleanness, his impurity, his, uh, uh, he could give that to other people by touching them. Uh, it was something that could be caught. Uh, he would not be allowed to enter into worship or to be enter into community uh, unless he was uh, cleansed of his illness and, uh, and, and had made the necessary purifications. Um, when we see this man's life, he, a man who could not even be touched, uh, for fear that someone else would contract his impurity, we find it all the more remarkable in the story of Jesus, where uh, just prior to healing the man, uh, the, the, the leprous man, he, um, he touches him, and therefore risking impurity. And it was Jesus's way of saying that while the law of Moses is important, there is something bigger going on, there is something deeper going on, and the laws of compassion or should not prevent you from me from touching you and, and meeting you where you're at. Um, uh, for me, um, trying to understand um, how, how Jewish law functioned and its importance uh, has been an uh, important part of me trying to understand the life of Jesus. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I think for us as Christians, we we look at it from a, a couple of different perspectives. Um, one. Um, Jesus tells us in the Gospels that he didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. In other words, he says that the law of Moses stands for all time. Um, why is it that we uh, don't keep um, some of those laws uh, while keeping other, you know, the moral laws in particular? Uh, we find uh, in the book of the Acts of the Apostles that the early Christians um, when they came together to, de to determine whether the new um, non-Jewish Christians had to keep the law of Moses, they had come to the decision 
that they had to abstain from certain things. They, they had to stay away from uh, things that were polluted by idols, from fornication and whatever had been strangled from blood. Uh, they, they, there was a, the moral law, in other words, was still operative in effect. However, those aspects of the law that were more ritual in tone um, were, not ne were not necessary to keep anymore. So laws pertaining to, again, the kosher laws and pertaining to circumcision and things like that were not required for Christians. When we look at the law today, we still look at the law as this great gift that God has given to us, uh, and we would do well to know it. Um, uh, the, in Catholic morality, we often describe uh, the moral law by using the Ten Commandments, those first commandments that God gave to Moses. Um, when he says, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods but me. Uh, you make no graven images for yourselves. It's our way of honoring the fact that only God is God and we shouldn't put anything in God's place. When we say you shall not take the Lord's name in vain, we are saying that we should not dishonor the name of God, either in, in word or in action. Um, remember, when we say keep holy the Sabbath day, or as we remember as Christians, remember to keep the Lord's day holy, we acknowledge the importance of Sunday um, as our day of worship and as a day of rest, uh, something that is commanded by God. Uh, when we say honor our father and mother, we honor our, our source and our origin and that our life comes from someplace and that we don't dishonor our family um, through our behavior or by treating them poorly. When we say you shall not kill, we look at not only just murdering somebody, we look at the anger we may harbor inside of our hearts uh, and, and to not direct that towards somebody else and to act on that. You shall not commit adultery. When you hear that, we think of being faithful in our relationships and the inviability of, uh, of, um, uh, of marriage, uh, the importance of marriage as the source of life, uh, as the source of family, and that we would allow nothing to, um, to uh, compromise or adulterate that. You shall not steal, that we should respect other people's things and not take what doesn't belong to us. Uh, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, that, that, it's just, that the truth matters, that is important. And you shall not cover your neighbor's wife or your, cover your neighbor's things. We look at the heart of what motivates us to take what does not belong to us, which is the, the act of coveting. Um, it's the desire. And God says to us, don't even desire what somebody else has. You know, um, sometimes we can get tripped up in the, in the Torah. There are 613 laws of the Torah. Uh, and then we remember in a special way those Ten Commandments. But when Jesus um, wanted to sum up the law, he did it in this way. Um, he is asked by uh, someone who addresses him and says, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So from 613 laws to 10 laws, from 10 laws to two laws, at the heart of the whole thing is us to honor God, to honor this covenant, uh, is to um, love God with all everything we have and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We accept this as the house rules of the Father. As we've been tracing this path of how God became our father, how, um, how God became our dad, um, we are looking at how uh, any family has to organize itself and saying there is a way to live within the family. Any family that has no law, any family that has no uh, rules lives in chaos. Uh, it is a sign of love in the family to say that I, uh, I, I care about you enough to give you rules for your well-being and so that you may grow and that you may become the people you are meant to be. Um, that is part of keeping covenant with God. He looks out for us by guiding us in the right direction. So I hope you check out the rest of our series. Next week, we're looking at King David, and then we'll look at the, the ultimate covenant in Christ. Um, and we thank you so much for, for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Take care.